Good afternoon, class. My name is Professor OK Guy. Welcome to Pokeology, an advanced discussion of Pokemon biology, traits, and behaviors. Today we will explore the Herbatillus family of Pokemon, commonly known as the seed Pokemon, Bulbasaur, Ivysaur, and Venusaur. Herbatillus lilium, otherwise known as Bulbasaur, is a quadrupedic Pokemon with thick, rough, leathery skin, much like several species of toad. Also similarly to numerous toad species, Bulbasaur possesses very short and thick legs, which it uses to maneuver through thick grasslands and forests of Kanto. Bulbasaur is unique in the Pokemon world for its symbiotic relationship with a specific species of plant. The bulb commonly found on its back is planted there at birth through spores left behind on the egg. When the Bulbasaur hatches, these spores attach themselves to its back then act in a similar fashion to the Ophiocordyceps unitillarius, otherwise known as the zombie fungus. A seed develops on the back and breaks through the skin of the Bulbasaur using mechanical pressure and enzymes. Over time, the plant spreads throughout the Pokemon's body. Leeching vines travel up the spine and through the base of the skull, which it then embeds itself onto the primary motor cortex, which is located in the back of this species' brain. With this neural connection, the Bulbasaur gains control over the movement of the plant, allowing the Bulbasaur to use it as a means of defense. This symbiotic relationship provides benefits to both the Pokemon and the plant. The plant gains protection and mobility, while the Bulbasaur gains an additional means to protect itself and the plant. The Bulbasaur also is provided additional energy from the plant's photosynthesis. Unlike the zombie fungus, this plant does not appear to cause damage to the Bulbasaur's anatomy or its brain, but instead enhances the Pokémon's physiology. As the Bulbasaur grows, so does the plant. When Bulbasaur is ready to evolve, the plant displays a pulsating blue bioluminescence, which is produced from bacteria found within the plant's pod. Also, Bulbasaurs have been known to gather in a single location in order to evolve. It is thought that this behavior is necessary as the evolution could be triggered by spores released by mature Venusaurs. After the Bulbasaur has obtained enough nutrients, both it and the plant attached to its back will go through a metamorphosis known as evolution into the second stage of this family of Pokemon. Herpatillus hydera, also known as Ivysaur. In this stage, the organism has lengthened legs and a longer body to support the now-bloomed plant on its back. Due to the plant's weight, Ivysaur can no longer stand up on its hind legs, and its legs have become significantly more thick. Also, this stage begins to display paratoid glands on the surface of its skin. These are similar to those found on toads, and are commonly mistaken for warts on the toad's skin. The bloom plant on its back is now a vibrant pink color and is surrounded by leafy green fronds. These leaves allow for greater collection of sunlight and photosynthesis. The neural connection between plant and Pokemon has become stronger, allowing Ivysaur to perform more complicated tasks involving the plant, including the use of various toxins and spores as another means of defense. In this stage, the Ivysaur can now manipulate the solar energy collected in the plant's coroplasts, transferring them to a gland found at the base of the plant and on the 6th lumbar of the Ivysaur spine. This energy can be stored when the Pokemon has excess sugars and is in no need of additional energy from the plant. This solar energy can be released by the Ivysaur and through the plant in a powerful explosion used as a last line of defense. However, this behavior is used sparingly as the organism becomes exhausted after unleashing that much energy at a single time. When Ivysaur has matured enough, it will again go through an evolutionary metamorphosis into its adult stage. When it is close to evolving, the plant on its back will begin to release a sweet-smelling aroma and will swell in size. It is thought that this is an attempt to promote energy collection before evolving, as the swelling increases photosynthesis and the smell attracts various organisms which the Ivysaur preys on, such as insects, small reptiles, and amphibians. The mature stage of this family, Herpatillus passiflora, otherwise known as Venusaur, is a squat Pokemon with very bumpy green skin. The paratoid glands 
which began to surface in the Ivysaur stage, have become very prominent, giving the Venusaur a very toad-like appearance. Venusaur has developed a very flat body with very short but thick legs. This is most likely in order to support the now fully developed plant on its back, which has bloomed into a large tree-like flower. This flower has pink leaves with white spots, and it is supported by a thick brown trunk, and is surrounded by green fronds similar to the Ivysaur stage. In this mature state, Venusaur can become quite large, at over 6 feet tall including the plant, and over 220 pounds. Venusaur's plant has fully developed allowing it to absorb large amounts of solar energy. This photosynthesis provides more than enough energy to sustain the mass of Pokémon, and allows Venusaur to enjoy a more sedentary lifestyle, as it no longer needs to actively hunt, though it can still accomplish this if need be. The primary motor cortex of the Venusaur is much larger than in its earlier forms, in order to almost have cellular control over the plant on its back. This in-depth control allows the Venusaur to produce a number of effects from the plant. It can control the production of energy, the use of carbon dioxide, and even control the flow of water through the plant's cells. The gland, which can store solar energy, has tripled in size since its Venusaur stage and can produce a significantly more powerful blast. However, due to this form's more sedentary nature and size, it seldom finds itself in danger. Venusaurs have been known to release several different pheromones in order to attract various Pokémon. It can produce scents which attract prey, when necessary, but can also be used to attract other Pokémon as well, including other Bulbasaur and Ivysaur from over 4 miles away. The Venusaur lures these Bulbasaur and Ivysaur together in order to trigger their evolutions with spores produced by the mature flower. Additionally, female Venusaurs have a seed visible on the top of their flower. This seed contains the spores which attach onto a newly laid Bulbasaur egg so that the symbiotic cycle can begin in the next generation. While this Pokemon is native to the grasslands and forests of Kanto, it has been vigorously domesticated by humans over thousands of years. Because of that, it is rare to find this family of Pokemon in the wild, and instead they are more commonly found as companions. They have developed a highly loyal personality, being devoted to its family, and also displaying various caretaker behaviors, which supports the theory that this family of Pokémon once lived in very large family groups. Thank you all for joining me in discussing the very first chapter of Pokéology. Remember to stay tuned for next time's discussion of Chapter 2, where we discuss the lizard family Pokemon, which includes Charmander and its evolution. Thank you all for watching, and see you next class!